The King of Kings, a 1927 film, tells the story of Jesus Christ in a way that's easy to understand. It was one of the first movies to bring such an important story to the big screen. The first time I saw it, I was struck by its simplicity and power. It made the events feel real and close like they were happening right in front of me. I remember watching it with my family, and it sparked a lot of discussion about history and faith. Now, as you watch this video, get ready for a mix of emotions. You'll find out some facts that are funny, others that might surprise you, and some that are downright sad. It's a roller coaster of a story that has stood the test of time. And we're curious, what's your story with the King of Kings? Do you have a memory or experience that's close to your heart? Share your stories and memories in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. Cecil B. DeMille's The King of Kings is a cinematic spectacle that captures the essence of classic religious art, bringing to life the works of da Vinci, Raphael Tintoretto, and Gustav Dor. The film's visual narrative is crafted with a profound sense of depth, particularly during the way of the cross scenes, where actors and extras are arranged in artfully composed living tableau. The black and white cinematography enhances the film's dramatic impact, especially in the crucifixion scenes, which are both awe-inspiring and chilling. The original 1928 soundtrack, with its chorus of voices, adds a haunting dimension to the film, particularly during the earthquake scenes. Although this score is only available for the shortened version of the film, it remains a powerful evocation of the era. The cast performances are noteworthy, with many actors who were prominent during the silent era. The portrayals of Pontius Pilate and the Roman centurion are particularly impressive, reflecting the actor's extensive backgrounds. While Joseph Schaukraut's portrayal of Judas is energetic, it sometimes veers into the exaggerated style typical of silent films, a contrast to the more subdued and dignified performance by H.P. Warner as Christ. The Criterion Collection's inclusion of behind-the-scenes footage offers a rare glimpse into DeMille's filmmaking process, adding significant value to the set. Despite the loss of much of our silent film heritage, the preservation efforts for masterpieces like The King of Kings are crucial for maintaining this important part of cinematic history. The new synthesized score for the complete film, while not as evocative as the original, serves its purpose without being overly distracting. In summary, The King of Kings stands as a testament to the grandeur of silent cinema and the enduring power of visual Cecil B. DeMille's The King of Kings is a cinematic spectacle that captures the essence of classic religious art in motion. The film's visual narrative is reminiscent of masterpieces by Da Vinci, Raphael, Tintoretto, and Gustav Dorer brought to life through DeMille's direction. The black and white cinematography enhances the film's dramatic impact, particularly in the way of the cross scenes, where the arrangement of actors and extras creates a series of living tableau rich in visual depth. The crucifixion and its aftermath are portrayed with a chilling, awe-inspiring intensity akin to a scene from Dante's Inferno. H.B. Warner's portrayal of Christ on the cross, set against the backdrop of wind-blown leaves and lightning, is particularly striking. The 1928 soundtrack, with its chorus of voices, adds a haunting dimension to these scenes, though it's unfortunate that it only accompanies the shortened version of the film. The cast, including Rudolf Schaukraut as Kephas and Joseph Schaukraut as Judas, deliver performances that range from the dignified to the dramatic. Bill Boyd's cameo as Hope Alone Cassidy assisting H.B. Warner's Old Man Gower is a notable moment. The film concludes with a powerful image of Jesus departing the Last Supper, transitioning to a modern skyline as Rock of Ages plays, capturing the essence of the era's religious sentiment. The Criterion Collection's inclusion of behind-the-scenes footage offers a rare glimpse into DeMille's filmmaking process, adding significant value to the set. While some performances may lean towards the theatrical, the film overall avoids the exaggerated style typical of silent films, instead offering a respectful and poignant depiction of Christ's life. Preserving films like The King of Kings is crucial, as they represent a significant part of our cinematic heritage. This film stands as a testament to the artistry and storytelling of the silent film era, and its impact continues to be felt today. In the early days of cinema, actors transitioned from stage to screen, bringing with them a wealth of experience and talent. H.B. Warner, known for his role in the film in question, was the grandfather of Ed Garner, continuing the acting legacy into future generations. Rudolf Schaukraut, another cast member, had an impressive debut in English theater with Shalom Ash's God of Vengeance, a play he had performed in German years earlier under the direction of Max Reinhardt in Berlin. Brandon Hurst, meanwhile, carved a niche for himself portraying antagonists in silent films, such as the Caliph in The Thief of Baghdad and the Traitor in The Hunchback of Notre Dame. 
His transition to sound films saw him frequently cast in roles that required a British demeanor, from policemen to military officers. In the early 20th century, the world of physical fitness and cinema saw two figures emerge as significant influences. Joe Bonomo, a well-known figure in the fitness industry, was a close associate of Charles Atlas, another prominent name in the field. Their competition for the title of world's most perfectly developed man was intense, with both contenders displaying remarkable physical prowess. Unfortunately, Bonomo had to withdraw from the contest due to an injury incurred while performing a stunt, paving the way for Atlas to claim the title and the fame that followed. Around the same time, Rudolf Schaukraut was making his mark in the world of theater. After joining the German theater in Hamburg at the turn of the century, he moved to the German theater in Berlin in 1905. Under the direction of Max Reinhardt, Schaukraut became a pivotal actor, contributing significantly to the company's success. Bonomo's career in film also included perilous moments, such as an incident during the production of Island of Lost Souls in 1932. While filming, he experienced a near-fatal accident when he fell into a water tank. The foam rubber of his costume absorbed water, causing him to sink and nearly drown, highlighting the risks actors often faced in the pursuit of their craft. In the early days of color film, a groundbreaking feature showcased two sequences in full color. The first, opening with the credits, depicted a lavish gathering hosted by Mary Magdalene. The second, found towards the film's conclusion, portrayed the somber scene at Christ's tomb after the crucifixion. These moments, totaling around 1-200 feet of film, stood out in an era predominantly seen in black and white. H.B. Warner, known for his leading role, faced personal tragedy when his first wife, Mary Burton Cousins, lost her life in a car accident on Long Island. She was previously married to Samuel C. Caddo and Fred R. Hamlin, both from Chicago. Years later, Joseph Schaukraut, another prominent actor from the film, passed away following a rehearsal for a musical set to open in New York. His final resting place is alongside his parents at Beth Allam Cemetery in Hollywood, where his ashes were interred. In the early 20th century, Emma Louise Elliott, a dressmaker from Newcastle, Indiana, faced life's challenges with resilience. After her first husband passed away, she found love again and married Cyrus D. Coble in 91. Her daughter, Julia Fay, would later grace the silver screen. Meanwhile, Joseph Schaukrop, an actor of considerable talent, experienced a twist of fate on the night of the Oscars. Initially misled by his agent about his chances, he was roused from sleep with news of his impending victory. He made it to the ceremony just in time to receive the Best Actor Award for his role in the life of Emile Zola, which also won Best Picture and Best Screenplay. Edward Pale SR Another actor whose work spanned decades often had his surname misspelled in various ways, reflecting the era's less stringent attention to detail in film credits. 